All right, guys, awesome stuff. We are very privileged to be joined by the amazing writer and director of Sin City, A Dame to Kill For. Give it up for Mr. Frank Miller. Give it up, Frank Miller, guys. This is exciting. Come on. Hey, folks. Um, it's a true honor to be joined by you today and, and, and thrilling uh, to get a, another Sin City film. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm sure one of the perks of this film finally coming out is you don't have people like me asking you when the next Sin City is coming out. That's got to be a relief because virtually since Sin City came out in 2005, we've been asking for the sequel. In, in, in a word or in a nutshell, why the delay? Why did it take so long? Well, um... A lot of things happened, and they involved a lot of lawyers and financiers and, and studios, but mostly the Weinstein Company, with whom Robert and I have a very good relationship, um, broke away from Disney, set up their own studio, and asked us to wait. And Robert and I had plenty of work to do, so we did. We were ready to go, really, um, right after the first Sin City. Um, and 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 uh, the the script is on its way. Um, the the third one uh, should enough of you uh, actually come to see the second one. Um, the third one should be on its way shortly. There we go. Enough with this nine years of waiting. Let's just get right to it, right? <laughs> um, talk to me about, did, did the delays, in, in fact, help you in any ways? Did it give you a time to assess, reassess, tinker with the script? Did it change much from what the movie would have been if you had the financing and everything in place six or seven years ago? There's several ways it changed it. One was that the original cast and the new cast um, got to see the first movie. So they got to really get a sense of what Sin City was. And, 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 and uh, when, when the, when the um, original cast showed up, they were, they were all bringing their A-game. A they they, they uh, blew my mind with their performances. Mickey and, and uh, Jessica um, and Rosario all uh, showed up so ready to go, I couldn't believe it. And, and the new people, like Ava Green and, and um, Joseph Gordon-Levitt and Josh uh, Brolin uh, brought um, a complete understanding of what Sin City was so, so that the, the, uh, the overall effect of the movie was, 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 was much stronger. And, and there, there wasn't as much confusion about my weird way of writing dialogue or, or, uh, or my, my uh, strange references to, to um, film noir. Is there, I mean, you said, it, you said it very well. I mean, like, it's great to see the returning characters, but it's also really exciting to see people like Brolin just key into your language and, and the mode of filmmaking, which is a very specific kind of writing and filmmaking. Um, you say it's, it's from seeing that first film, that probably helps give them a head start, but is there, a t is there a type of actor that you look for that fits into the Sin City universe? Well, you know, I've I, I got to admit, I'm, a, I'm, yeah, I'm first and fo foremost a cartoonist, and so I look for people who look like my drawings. <laughs> um, but but um, beyond that, um, with, with, with Josh Brolin, for instance, um, I was looking for someone who could personify the, the, the character that I spent so much time writing. And, and he, it, it just rolled out of him. And, and when, when um, I was able to get Stacy Keach to, 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 you know, to play the villain Wallenquist, um, it was, it was um, icing on her cake. And when Ava Green became available, that was... Um, more than icing on the cake. That was that was uh, uh, another cake. <laughs> you, <laughs> she uh, she knocks it out of the park in, in this one. She's uh, amazing, and um, you know you obviously relish writing. I mean, you write writing everybody, but the, your female characters truly pop. They are unabashedly sexy and strong yeah. and duplicitous, uh, and all the complexities that human beings are. Do you take a, a special delight in in? 
in the kind of portrayals that you're able to get in terms of the female side of things? Because, I mean, we're used to seeing complex male characters in film. The ladies get short shrift often. Well, uh, I, uh, you know, like I said, first and foremost, I, 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 I draw comic books. And, and uh, that means sitting alone in a room with a drawing board. And, and, and drawing what I dream of. And, 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 and uh, I mean, a, 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 a secret, perhaps, of cartoonists is, is that we tend to write stories about things we want to draw. And in my case, that involved beautiful women, guys in trench coats, and antique cars. There you get Sin City. Um, the collaboration is, is obviously well known. You and Robert Rodriguez are, are the directors of this as you were the first go around. Um, has the dynamic changed in terms of what each of you bring? Is there, are you, is one person working with the actors more? Well, give me a sense of sort of the dynamic between the two of you on set. Robert and I, um, you know, it, it, it's funny. I, I, I grew up with three brothers and now I feel I have a fourth. Um, that, that he and I bonded so well on, on, on the first Sin City that um, when we started the second one, it was almost like we were picking up a conversation that we'd started a day before. And, 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 and it, it just led on. Now, both of us work with the actors intensely. Robert works with, with technical and a lot great, you know, a great deal more than I do. Um, you know, he is the producer, he's the editor, he, he, he's the cameraman. Um, and and, and um, I tend to, to be the, uh, the one who, who talks with the actors more intimately. I, I told him once that uh, um, if we were rock stars, which, which we aren't, but if we were rock stars, uh, he'd be Ellis Presley and I'd be Bob Dylan. <laughs> Between... Um these two films, these two Sin City films, and of course, um, 300. I would think these experiences have maybe changed your view of, of the be these are the best possible kind of experiences I would think for you as someone that comes from uh, a non-filmmaking world and to be able to translate your vision in such a vivid uh, way that was never possible before the technology that, that we got in, in, in recent years. Has, the, has have those three films, and I guess you could call uh, the latest 300 film in there as well, has that changed your attitude about film because you've had your ups and downs in terms of working in Hollywood over the years. Was Sin City a turning point? Um, Sin City was definitely a turning point because I had, I had come back from being a screenwriter and, and come to the, the unhappy realization that writing a screenplay was a lot like uh, building a beautiful fire hydrant and having a long line of dogs waiting for it. And, and, and uh, so I, I came back to my drawing board. I decided to do the, the one comic book that nobody could possibly adapt to movies. And I came up with Sin City. And, and, and then this crazy Texan shows up and he shows me how he can make it into a movie. And he talked me into it. Can you talk to me, uh, rather the crowd today, a little bit about the, the structure of this? Because this is a unique film in that it's sequel, prequel, uh, I'm not sure what the term is to, to call uh, A Dame to Kill for. Um, some of it's derived from your work, some of it's original. Talk to me a little bit about how you arrived at the structure you did. Well, um, we, we uh, knew from the beginning that the... the, that the um, Movie would be based on a Dame to Kill for, the the longest um, Sin City that existed at the time, and 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 we we built the rest around it, but uh, Robert along the way said, "I ain't new, you know, anyone we, we can you can throw people that they won't won't have seen the books." Well, you know, asking me for, for that is like you know um. Well, it's easy as hell. Um, and and, and uh, I, I had an, another Nancy Callahan story, which Jessica Alba did brilliantly. 
and 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 uh, and another story completely that 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 that, that involves a gambler, um, and 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 uh, you know who, who basically beat the wrong guy, and and Joseph Gordon Levitt Levitt uh, played the part brilliantly. He became our um, well for the older ones of you, he became our John Garfield. It's also fun to see, as you mentioned, Nancy returning, and and it really goes on an arc based on what we saw in the, in the first film. She gets her own story, somewhat of a revenge story, narrates her own story. Um, fun to work with Jessica in a different kind of capacity. I mean, she's come a long way in the nine years since the first one. Uh, Jessica um, came a lot further than I even imagined. Uh, when she first showed up, I saw her on the set, and I hadn't seen her in eight years. And, and, I, and I gave her a hug and said, hi, Jessica, and she very coldly said, hello. And, I, and um, I, she went to the set, and I thought, what did I do to piss her off? <laughs> well, it turns out I had done nothing to do so, um, but she was already in character for a graveyard scene. And, and she stayed in character for the entire shoot. Um, she delivered at least eight times the performance she did in the first movie. Um, I, I cannot tell you how extraordinary she is in this. You also uh, bring back a, a number of familiar faces from the first one. We're about to see a clip with uh, the amazing Mickey Rourke. Also, Bruce Willis is back, Rosario. Was it tough to get everybody back, or were they all, did they all enjoy the experience so much the first time that it was pretty, pretty easy? They jumped right on the train. Um, let's take a look at this clip because um, there's nothing, it's one thing to talk about Sin City, it's, it's altogether another thing to look at it. So let's look at a, a clip from A Dame to Kill For, shall we? You can't keep a good man down. <laughs> um, I can't imagine any, anybody, I'm sure, as I'm sure you can, uh, but Mickey Rourke in, in this role at this point. Um, take me back to the first days on set with Mickey playing this character, it must have blown you away to see what he was doing. Well, the very first time that I met Mickey Rourke, um, I, you know, I, I, I'm not as familiar with, with movies as, as, as Robert is. And he said he wanted Mickey Rourke to play Marv. And I said, you mean that skinny guy from Body Heat? <laughs> and and, and, and uh, we, we, you know, it was agreeable enough, but I, you know, I, I was skeptical. And, and, and uh, we sat in Robert's hotel room until Mickey showed up. And uh, he threw open the door and almost took out a door jam with his shoulders and walked in with, with, his, with his, you know, this, this strange little dog of his. And, and uh, he sat down and, and he was not at all the man that I imagined. Um, and he simply sat and talked about his life and his experiences in therapy and, and so on. And, 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 and uh, I remember um, having a notepad. Um, and on the notepad I wrote, met Mickey Rourke, he is Marv. Um, because he instantly owned the character. Then, then, then he got up and, and, and walked out, and his dog had pissed all over Robert's couch. That was probably a thank you in advance for the makeup that he probably relishes. I'm, I'm guessing Mickey, that's probably the toughest part of the conversation with Mickey, involve, involves the makeup. Actually, um, the, the, uh, Robert has streamlined the makeup process. So, I mean, it used to take two and a half hours, and, 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 and we got it down to 45 minutes. So Mickey was pretty happy in the second shot, in the second movie. Is, is working on set at this point in, in your film career, um, is that the favorite part of the process? You say, obviously, Robert, as anyone knows, is, as you say, he's a technophile, loves the process from beginning to end. Is it really about the set for you? I mean, do you enjoy post or pre-production? I, I mostly enjoy working with the actors. Um, everything you've ever heard about actors is untrue. That actors are intelligent, they're talented, they work their butts off, and and they and they will they will they will go the the furthest distance 
to, to serve their part and to do a good job. Do you, do you direct them much or coach them much when it comes to the narration? I mean, the voiceover is so integral to, to the narrative of the story. Again, do they, have they um, generally known the right key to, to deliver it in or do you have to kind of steer them in the right direction? Well, with, 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 with the voiceover, um, it involves a fair amount of direction, but, but um, it really depends on the actor and, and the part and the, and the um, circumstances they're in. As John Ford once put it brilliantly, 80% of his job was telling the actors where and when they were. And, 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 and uh, um, so what I'll often do during that is, is remind an actor what the emphasis is, what, what the important points are to make. Uh, but um, the, the cast I had was so good, it, was, it really didn't take a lot of work. Do you have a favorite of the characters to write for, of the Sin City characters, a personal favorite? If I said, if I answered that question... <laughs> Nobody's here. I, I, no, there's a lot of people here. I can see them. Um, the, 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 uh, um, if I answered that question, I'd be insulting the rest of the cast, and I will not answer it. Ever the diplomat, Mr. Frank Miller. Uh, let's turn it over to your awesome questions. I'm sure you guys have a lot for this very talented gentleman. Questions, please. Do you find yourself, now that you've uh, had this deep experience in film as well as your experience in uh, comics, looking more at comics or looking more at film? And can you talk about some of the films you've been watching and some of the comics you've been reading? Well, I, I read a lot of comics and I watch a lot of movies. I mean, I, I won't go beyond that because the list would be so long and it would sound like name dropping. But um, I, I, you know, I'm a man with two loves. I, 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 I really deeply enjoy uh, working at a drawing board alone and and but at times it is lonely and and then going on the set being surrounded by people and getting to play boss and all that that's great too so so jumping back and forth has been a real thrill for me i, I know you're probably asked this a lot but i'm just curious like what is your perspective obviously it's you know you look at a multiplex and and comic book graphic novel derived films dominate the landscape is it, is it more of like an attitude of, I knew this was coming, of course this was inevitable, or are you in, uh, in shock as, as many perhaps are? When I first came to comic books, it was back before most of you were born, actually, um, it was in the, in, in, in the late 70s. And, and uh, my editors, told me, what are you doing here? We're going to be out of business in five years. Everybody knows it. Comic books were doomed to everybody's mind. It's only been since um, with, 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 with the, um, with the uh, um, rather amazing accomplishment of Richard Donner in the first Superman film that, that um, they, they, they started going back to the source material. And now with Marvel Comics uh, picking up Jack Kirby's genius um, and, and, and reproducing, essentially, comic books from the 60s, uh, they, 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 they've, they've reached a new level. So they've brought, the, they've brought the thrill that I felt as a little kid back. And, 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 and so I am thrilled and surprised Hi, how are you? Um, love your work. You're awesome. Thank you. <laughs> I just want to know, as a cartoonist, and the growth of the comic book um, fun, uh, franchise and the movies that are being made, did you ever like look back on any of the work that you did and just want to say, I wish that became a movie, or I wish I can do something more with that? All the time. Uh, but... but uh, but, you know, looking back and, 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 and shedding crocodile tears, tears is nobody any good. I'm having, I'm having a wonderful time doing what I'm doing. Thanks. 
Hi. Um, so you mentioned earlier that there's a third Sin City movie on the way. Um, so do you envision uh, the Sin City films as a trilogy, as a completed trilogy, or do you foresee um, an unlimited number of installments as long as the demand is there? Well, thanks for asking. I see it as a trilogy. Um, you know, after that, we'll see where it goes. What is, uh, I have a question that I, I meant to actually bring up after we saw that clip. I mean, I think it's well known that the, the, the technology employed by uh, Robert is, is, is staggering. I mean, what does it look like on the set? Is there literally nothing there? Are there some props? What is it? When you first stepped on the set of a Sin City movie, did you say, are we really making a movie? <laughs> or were you, were you, how much trust did you have in him that first day? Because it, it doesn't look like conventional filmmaking. Well, you walk into um, Robert's set, and you're walking into a green world. It's a big green void. If a guy is carrying a gun, he's got the gun. If he's sitting in a chair, he's got the chair. If he's sitting next to a table, it's probably not there. Um, and, 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 and these things are created after the fact. Um, the, the, uh, <clears throat> the thing with Robert is that, is that he, he sees the um, movie screen much like I see a comic book page that it's, it's a tapestry to work upon. And, and, he, and, and, and he, um, he creates upon it. And, and, and so um, I, I, have, I had to learn to trust that, that you know, rather than, rather than uh, be stupid and, and say, Robert, can we do this? To, to learn to say, Robert, how are we gonna do this? And, and he um, always had an answer. Hi, a uh, big fan. Uh, Hi. You had Batman and Superman trade blows in Dark Knight Returns for the first time, and now seeing it on screen, what do you feel about that? And uh, has DC asked you to consult on the upcoming movie? No, I haven't seen it, and no, they haven't asked. Hello, Mr. Miller. Hello. Um, uh, what's the best part about uh, directing and writing Sin City, like both the first film and the second film? By far and away, the thing that, 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 that um, startled me the most, that I learned the most from, was that I, I, I was nervous coming in, you know, like anybody would be coming into a new craft. I was nervous coming in um, about working with so many people because I was so used to working alone. But um, what, I, what I was amazed by was how I fell in love with actors. And, 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 and it has been actors that have, 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 have really um, made me feel um, better ways to tell a story. And, 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 and um, I've learned so much from, from, from the casts I've dealt with that, that I, I, uh, um, I've got to say that that's my favorite part. Hi, Frank. Hi. Um, okay, so in your simplest terms, how would you describe what we can expect in A Dame to Kill for? I know it's kind of a loaded question. <clears throat> well, more and merrier. Um, but no, as far as describing Dame to Kill for, what it is is, it bec is because the, the actors came back so more prepared and the new actors came in so prepared um, and also, we've done the heavy lifting by, by, um, by you know, introducing the world of Sin City. That this time we get to delve deeper into it and, and show more of the characters there, more of the, if you will, denizens of Sin City. And, 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 and I, I feel like it's, it's a much deeper look at, at the town. Hi, I'm a huge fan of The Spirit. I was wondering if you were going to do a second one? Oh. I mean, I ask if I'm going to do a second Spirit? Um, they'd have to ask me. You know, I, I'd be happy to. But, but, um, but I'm, I'm glad you liked it. Thank you. 
Uh, was I correct to hear that you're a classic car fan? I'm a fan of, car, of cars that look good. You know, I, I mean, I think they, they stopped making them around 1970. Although there's some, some good ones that are starting to pop up, pop up now. But, um, but I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of, 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 you know, 1950s and 1940s cars. Yes. Then I guess my question would be, what's the fastest car you've ever driven? A Ford Mustang convertible, 1970. Uh, the thing ran like a son of a bitch. And it's waiting for him downstairs. The motor's running right now. Uh, the good news, guys, is only a few more days to the very long-awaited Sin City, a dame to kill for. Hopefully we won't have to wait too much longer for the third one. Let's give it up for the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Frank Miller.